Right, well, if we could start by asking, why is it that you want to come to uh, Britain and to this EDL rally? Well, uh, no, number one, we, we've been invited there. Um, uh, we, we have, we usually accept, uh, uh, if possible, most of the invitations that people give us in order that we might be able to uh, speak out on the subject of Islam or radical Islam. Uh, for us, it's a good opportunity to possibly uh, set uh, the record straight. Uh, sometimes whenever you uh, uh, speak on subjects, sometimes the news media doesn't get it totally right, so that's a very good opportunity. Uh, of course, I personally, my ancestries come from that area, from, from England, from Wales, Jones. Uh, my daughter is married to an Englishman. Uh, they live in Plymouth there. Uh, so there is also my grandchildren. So of course I have somewhat of a uh, a desire uh, to see England uh, uh, prosper, and of course to stay a uh, form of democracy. So how much do you know about Islam in Britain? Uh, yeah, I, I only know what I have seen um, on the on the internet. Uh, I am not totally ignorant concerning Islam in Europe. I, I lived in Europe for 30 years uh, and saw the advancements of, uh, of Islam. Uh, I have seen many demonstrations there where um, Muslims uh, call for the death of UK, they call for the death of Israel, the death of America. Uh, I know that there is definitely an element there that would like to see England, yeah, probably the world, uh, governed under Sharia law. Uh, they make statements like, we would like to turn Buckingham Palace into a mosque and the Queen must convert or leave the country. Uh, the, the, those type of elements, uh, I believe, is something that the general English public, uh, definitely the American public, uh, would not be interested in. Do you see a difference between the kind of extremists who might make some of those statements and ordinary Muslims at all? Oh, yes, definitely, definitely. We have always tried to make it clear. Uh, we here in America, and I assume also in England, we are definitely not against uh, the modern Muslim. We have your freedom of religion, freedom of speech. They are more than welcome in America, as I assume they are in England, uh, to practice their religion, uh, to build, build mosques. That is absolutely no problem. Uh, we are just definitely against uh, that radical element um, that, that, that we feel is possibly uh, much larger and much more dangerous uh, than we realize. So you don't but, think Islam uh, itself is, is evil at all anymore? Yeah, um, I, think, I think it would depend on uh, the, 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 the person that, that you are asking. Uh, I mean, I'm a pastor, uh, so of course from a pastor's viewpoint, uh, we would definitely consider Islam evil. evil. Yes, of course. So you don't have anything against ordinary Muslims, but Islam is evil. What's your message to British Muslims when you come then? Yeah, that, that, that's of course then a different message. Like I said, as a pastor, we believe Jesus Christ is the only way, and that makes every other religion, of course, wrong. My message, I know there's somewhat of a concern uh, about me coming, but I can guarantee you I have every intention in obeying the laws of the land there. And my message to the uh, moderate Muslim would be the same message I would give them here in America. They are welcome. Uh, they, they are welcome to be there, welcome to worship, welcome to build mosques. Like I said, I believe what is not welcome is that radical element, uh, is sometimes their desire to change a country's constitution, to institute Sharia law, to make statements like, which I understand you all only have a limited uh, freedom of speech, to make statements like uh, death to the UK uh, that must somehow not come under your uh, realm of free speech. But uh, to the modern Muslim and to the society in general, my message is one of, like I said, civil obedience, obeying the laws of the land, respecting the laws of the land. You got a lot of publicity since your original threat to burn a Quran on 9-11. Uh, what lessons would you say you've learned since then, and particularly since you decided not to do that? Yeah, I, I think I think concerning Islam, I haven't learned much. I, I believe that it's there's an element of Islam that's just as dangerous as ra and radical as I thought it was. Uh, 
Well, what I have learned is possibly two things. Number one, uh, a lot more people agree uh, with our point of view that are willing to stand up. Um, there at the church in Gainesville and throughout America, I have people come up to me, talk to me, uh, but, but many people are afraid to speak out. They're afraid of uh, violence. They're afraid of losing their job. Their pastors are afraid of losing their church. I mean, as you know, is that Muslims' fault? Sorry, if they lose their jobs, is that is that Muslims' fault? Oh, of course not. No, but people are people are afraid. They're afraid of that radical element. And I think the next thing is that um, is that yeah, there, there is a, a great fear. People are not willing to really stand up and speak out um, because my message has been very clear concerning the modern Muslim that that is not a problem. Uh, I have a problem with the radical element, and I believe there is definitely uh, no problem or should be no problem speaking out against that. Uh, actually, I'm surprised there are not more Muslims speaking out against that or speaking out against the action of 9-11. There are some, but not in, uh, not in great numbers. You see, from... Some people are saying in Britain that the, the EDL is desperate for the kind of publicity that you got when you made that threat to burn the Quran, and that's why they're inviting you over. This is just about trying to get publicity. Yeah, I cannot answer for them. I assume that that's not true. I assume that it is an accusation that is also made about me, uh, that I did this whole thing, and I am continuing to do it because of publicity. That is absolutely not true. Well, isn't that uh, why your secretary they, rang the EDL and asked for you to, to come? I don't believe it was my secretary. I think it was my assistant. I'm not sure he did contact them. We have contacted a lot of people. So you uh, asked, you contacted the EDL? We, as far as I know, my assistant I contacted them first, yes. And then out of that, the invitation came for us to come over. Why do you think you have the authority to speak to British people about Islam? I mean, how many people are members of your church in America? I, I believe I have that authority because of uh, we, we, just, we just look around the world and we see what is going on. Uh, I mean, we see that in Europe. Uh, we see uh, in Muslim-dominated countries there is no freedom. There's no freedom of speech. Uh, in, in countries like Saudi Arabia, I mean, women do not even have a driver's license. I mean, people do not even have basic rights in Islam-dominated countries. And if they are wanting to institute that uh, in our Western society, then I think uh, basically anyone is qualified to stand up, speak their opinion, and say we do not want this. The Home Secretary has the power to ban a great many preachers from this country and has done so, yes. including preachers right like Louis Farrakhan. Uh, some people would say there's no difference between you. Oh, there's definitely. Uh, I, I, I know who he is. I, of course, am not that familiar with him. I have not studied everything that he says. But uh, as I said, I think my message is definitely much, much different uh, because I am saying Muslims are welcome. Uh, they just need to submit to the Constitution and the laws of the country. Uh, and, that, and, that, and that acts of violence, uh, that Sharia law, and the things that they have said, like I already repeated, uh, death to the UK, I'm sure is not welcomed uh, in England. Pastor Terry Jones, thank you very much for speaking to us. Uh, thank you.